During lockdown, I built a city. It has developed slowly during the year and it has grown to house over 125,000 citizens. The road and transport infrastructure was designed and redesigned by me as the city grew, keeping within the budgetary restrictions of the game. Infrastructure costs are funded from taxation on housing and industry. I zone areas and the game builds the houses, shops and factories in these zones. I provide electricity and water and I set down buildings throughout the city for emergency as well as other services. At the centre of my city is this complex transport hub where trains, monorail, underground and buses connect. But before I tell you what all these people are doing, let me give you an overview of the construction process. Starting from a greenfield site, there is motorway access provided within the first 2x2 two two km square. More land is bought later when funds allow. Roads are constructed and have building plots either side. The building plots are zoned for housing, shops or factories. These premises will require electricity, sewage and water services. Initially the game makes available wind turbines for electricity, a simple sewage outlet and water pumping stations. Later power stations of various kinds and sewage treatment plants become available at a higher cost. Initially there is only a requirement for housing, so these are zoned first. The game recognises that there is a demand for housing and that squares have been zoned as residential and so starts building. It is possible later in the game to apply a theme for a more uniform look, but initially the houses are of a random design. As soon as the houses are built, citizens arrive by road and move in. This creates a demand for work and so squares are zoned as industrial, being careful to keep these away from residential areas due to noise and ground pollution, which could cause citizens to be ill. Next, shops are required and so other squares are zoned as commercial. Interestingly, the game has constructed a village pub first. Perhaps it considers this is the most essential building. When the village grows, a school and doctor's surgery can be placed, together with a landfill site which spawn dustbin lorries. Later police and fire stations too are added. And now we have the makings of a compact, sustainable community. As we develop the village into a town and then a city, lorries servicing the factories quickly exceed road capacity and the motorway access clogs up. To provide alternative access to the city, rail and ship depots have to be built. That still leaves the problem of providing routes from these depots to the factories. To bring in tourists to boost revenue, access to the city through other methods than road are required, so harbours, national and international airports have to be constructed and again this leaves the problem of providing routes from these entry points to the shopping centres and the leisure complexes. I have to design a transport infrastructure to alleviate any bottlenecks while trying to keep costs down. The game decides the destination of every lorry, car and citizen and will send it the quickest route depending on the length of road and speed limits and for citizens mode of transport. Unfortunately this does not take account of queuing. 
Citizens will happily spend time waiting at a bus stop, even though they could have walked to their destination more quickly, but they are very lazy. Similarly, lorries will sit in traffic jam rather than use a longer but traffic-free route. So let's return to these scurrying figures to see what they are doing. Well, clicking on any of them brings up a panel describing who they are and their destination. The panel says that this is Robert Cooper, a well-educated young adult at the university, and he is going to the tennis courts at the Spa Hotel above Chester Park suburb. He lives at the Broad Residence, which is close by the Haslingfield monorail station, which is where we picked him up. The game would have worked out his quickest route and moves the character across the city using a car or hopping on and off public transport as required. Here he travels round to the railway station by the airport. From the airport, it is possible to get to Chester Park in several ways, going either direction on the local line that loops round the city, or via an underground train that links to the south circular monorail line. But the shortest way which the game executes is to travel clockwise via the city train. Each sim has to travel from his home to work or the shops and return in a reasonable time without spending too long in queues else they give up. If that happens to too many citizens then factories will have no workers and shops will have no one to sell to. The train travels by two tunnels to Pirate Island Station. I set the island up as a leisure resort with buildings that can be purchased after the population exceeds various milestones. The island has a zoo, an aquarium, a five-star hotel and a boat museum. I used to have a ferry link to this end of the island, but passenger numbers declined after I installed a faster monorail link and then the city train. The train now takes him across the New Holland district where I engineered some canals with canal side housing and then through another tunnel to a sunken station in the centre of Chester Park. Robert leaves the station, crosses to the central reservation to catch the tram, which is on a circular route around the district. The trams make a nice sound and are more fun than buses, but getting them here from the central depot meant making a bridge with tram tracks, as apart from the motorway, there is no road access. He leaves the tram and walks down the road to a newly installed funicular railway, which replaces an old cable car. I downloaded it from the game's website, where clever modelers have uploaded buildings and vehicles which they have crafted. It is a model of the Stuesbahn funicular railway in Switzerland, the steepest in the world, where the carriages are on gimbals to keep the occupants upright. Mine climbs to the Spa Hotel, where there are the tennis courts, which is Robert's destination. If the dustbin lorries, police cars, ambulance, hearses and fire engines cannot service the city, then rubbish piles up, the crime rates climb all the crematoriums are not collecting people who die. Then the inhabitants abandon their homes and leave the city. By manipulating the budget, or building more medical centres or police stations, etc., the number of service vehicles available can be increased, but they will require to get to where they are needed in a timely manner. To prevent service vehicles getting stuck in queues, a free-flowing road network and efficient public transport system must be provided, sometimes with complex motorway junctions and timed traffic lights. Without it, service vehicles like fire engines are stuck in traffic and houses and factories burn down. Lorries carrying raw materials to factories and goods to shops are delayed and the city will fail. My transport infrastructure has over 200 buses, trams, trains, monorail and underground trains, plus a few ferries and cable cars. And whereas there is some satisfaction in detailing 
city to make it better looking, my main enjoyment comes from designing, and as the city grew, redesigning this transport system, solving traffic problems and keeping the city running smoothly. When things go wrong, they go wrong quickly. I expand an industrial estate which causes chaos to the surrounding roads, as drivers will not choose less congested roads. Luckily, unlike real life, the game can be paused while a solution is found and the road network restructured or the speed limits altered to encourage alternative routes. The game provides tools such as policies and taxation to encourage particular activities. For instance, cycle paths or roads with cycle lanes to encourage cycling and thus reduce traffic. It then has statistics or other tools for monitoring purposes. Here is the budget and taxation pages. And here are graphs of population change and numbers of tourists and cyclists. I derive pleasure traveling around my city, seeing it at different times of the day or night. And so I will end this video with some shots of the city. I hope you have enjoyed this brief overview and tour of my building project and whereas I could have been clearing out my loft or tidying my garage, this has been far less strenuous.